What is up you guys? Welcome back. Today I'm breaking down highlighting, contouring, bronzing, walking you through it step by step, sharing all of my tips and tricks with you. I feel like this is one of the more intimidating things in makeup because all of these words get tossed around and they can be used interchangeably and it can be a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna break it all down for you step by step and make it very easy peasy lemon squeezy. So I hope you guys like this video. Please subscribe and let's get started. Before we get started, I wanna break down what the difference between contouring and bronzing is because there can seem to be a little bit of confusion. There is some crossover, but ultimately, contouring is when you wanna create shadows on the face. I like to think about when you're outside and the sun is hitting you and then it creates a shadow on the ground. Contouring is used to create illusions on the face. So if I am gonna be contouring in one spot, it's gonna create a shadow so that the other thing pops. Um, bronzing is more of like, you've been on vacation, you've got the sun kissing your face. It's where the sun is naturally going to hit your face. So if you go outside right now and the sun hits you, where are you gonna see some color on the skin? That's kind of what bronzing is. You don't necessarily have to use them in that way if you don't want to, because at the end of the day, makeup is personal and you can do your makeup however you wanna do it. And you can, at the end of the day, just say, screw the rules, I'm gonna do whatever I want. So when you're looking for a contour product or a bronzing product, technically both of those can be used interchangeably, but Typically, for a contour product, you would wanna look for something that's matte, has no shimmer, because again, you're creating a shadow. Shimmer is something that will bring light outwards. So you wanna look for something that is more matte. Again, assuming you are following the like makeup rules. And also, typically, you would gear more of your contour products towards things that are neutral to cooler toned. You usually wouldn't go for something like super, super warm, but again, like there are some skin tones that are extremely warm toned and you wouldn't want something too cool because then it can look muddy on the skin. When it comes to bronzer, that can be matte, it can be shimmer. A lot of times those products are warmer in tone, so more red undertoned, orange undertoned, it's gonna give you that warmth to the skin typically. So those are the general rules of thumb between the difference of contouring and highlighting. I'm gonna break it down for you now. I am gonna show you cream and powder because I personally like to do both on my skin. I feel like it gives me more depth and dimension in my skin. So with all that being said, let's get started. So I'm gonna start with my favorite cream contour product at the moment. I right now have my foundation and concealer on, but I do not have any powder. If you are gonna go into a cream product, you usually don't wanna put on powder first. You go in with a powder product all over first and then you go in with a cream. Sometimes it can make it more difficult to blend. So the cream product I'm gonna be using today is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Contour Wand. I have the shade Fair Medium. This has been one of my favorite products since probably about 2019, I believe. And then my favorite brush for any cream contour product is the Smith 157. The reason why I love this is the shape. You can see it kind of creates this wedge. It's an angle right here. So it's full on this side, shorter on this side. It's very dense, but not too insanely dense. So it's going to keep the product where I want it, but it's not going to be so dense where it doesn't like fan out my product either. I like that nice in between. It's got some movement here. If I was using a contour product that comes in a stick form or in like a cream container form, I would just pick this up directly on the product. Um, a lot of times I see, which I'm actually going to show you with this here today. Um, a lot of times I'll see people like draw on all over and create like, you know, the old school School, like drawing you know where it's like shadows highlights and whatever well the problem with that is that number one the products can dry down and then when you go in with your brush to blend it out it can be a little bit difficult because that product has dried on the skin and now you've got actual stripes on your face and usually that's not the vibe that we're going for so I find picking up the product directly from the product with your brush is going to be a little bit easier for you to blend out you won't have to deal with it drying and then you work section by section with this though I do feel like it does dry fast but with this product I like to draw directly on my skin that's just a personal preference with this with this you want to take the tip and open it up 
And I'm gonna work section by section. I'm not gonna go and do the whole face and show you the placement right off the bat because it will dry and I will have stripes on my face. So I'm gonna work section by section. I'm gonna start with the cheekbones and then we'll blend out and then we'll move on from there. So when you're contouring, you wanna basically pop out um, the certain areas that you want to feature. So I think the first thing is maybe identifying what face shape you have. So you can go online and just Google like different face shapes and you can, I think even TikTok has a filter where you can like see what face shape you have. With mine, I feel like I have a little bit more of a rounded shape, borderline square. I think it's great to experiment with different ways to contour to see what you think is the most flattering for you. So I've played around with this over the years and I switch it up from time to time. I don't think that you have to be stuck in a box of one way of doing things. It's fun to play around. Again, it is just makeup so what I'm gonna do is follow the tip of the ear downwards and I work this honestly into my hairline sometimes and I'm working right on that bone you can kind of feel it in here now the angle that I'm going towards is the top of the ear to the corner of the mouth so that is the angle that I am going to follow so I'm gonna start here I'm gonna squeeze just a tiny bit of product out and do less than I think I need, just like that. I'm gonna grab my brush, I'm gonna take the angle of it right here and just push the product in. I'm not moving it up or down, I'm just pushing it in like this. Really just stippling the product into the skin. And when I get closer to here, I kind of curve it downwards. That's just a personal preference. That is the way to contour a rounded shape. And there you go. The only downside I feel like this product has is that you really can't layer it. Anytime that I've tried, it ends up taking away product. So I kind of just leave it there and then I build on with powders afterwards. But I still really love it. To me, it gives like a nice cool toned shadow to the face. I feel like you can already see that sculpting happening over there. So I'm gonna do this side next. Just do the stripe and then start stippling it in. I think a good rule, rule of thumb is to also stay further back on the face because the more you come in on the face, the more dramatic the look will be. So keeping it further back and then lightly bringing it forwards. And then I like to do the sides of the face. I don't like to do too much on the top because I don't feel like I have a too big of a forehead. If you have a forehead that you want to give the illusion that it's smaller, then you would contour the whole border of your forehead. For me, I'm kind of just wanting to balance this out and add a little bit of shading here. So I'm only gonna add a little bit on the sides of the forehead. Just blending it in. With this one, I'm moving it around a little bit more than I did on the cheeks, just because I feel like I don't need to be as careful up here as I was on the cheeks. And then make sure it's faded in the center. If you need to go back in with your foundation brush just to brighten up the center, you can do that. Here we go. And now my favorite part is the jawline. So I like to contour all right here because I want to create a shadow. So I go all the way around. You can kind of see it there. And then with this, I just drag it downwards behind the ear down the neck and then I always want to make sure that the edges are good I always want to make sure that the edges are blended so I also blend it upwards into the face as well so that you don't have that like stripe on your jaw you can always go back in with that foundation brush I like to take this around the nose everybody can contour their nose totally differently I feel like my nose is um, I'm already happy with the shape of it. I just want to accentuate it a little bit more. So I go in just on the edges of the nose and then I take the brush, I'll use the tip of it and just blend in the product. This is weird doing it with my eyeshadow down because I usually do all of my face makeup first. So this is weird. <laughs> usually I like blend it into the eyes and stuff. I don't see a lot of people doing this, but I've done this for years and I love this because it kind of gives me like a pre-contour or like a pre-plump for my lips. I'll use this very thinly right around the border of my lips. So right here, 
and then very lightly on the top. You don't wanna to do too much on the top cause it'll make it look like you have a mustache. And then just blend it in with my brush. Then I'll go in with my foundation brush. Okay, so I'm just going in and making sure everything is blended everywhere. So I really like to layer my products. I don't like to just use a powder bronzer or a powder contour or a cream contour. I like to mix them all together. If you want to do it this way, this is the order that you would do it. But if you're not into cream and you just want to do powder, this is where you would pick it up. So if you have on your base or say you've just cream contoured, then you want to powder your face. Um, I have two favorites here. I've got the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. This is a classic. And then I also have the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Powder. This is in the shade number two. This is also one of my favorite products. So I am gonna be using the Laura Mercier one and just picking up the powder here in the cap. And I'm gonna set under the eyes and wherever I get oily. This is not about highlighting or contouring. This is just about setting the makeup so that it doesn't budge, especially with like summer coming up and stuff. Um, let me know if you want like a sweat proof foundation routine or something. I think that could be fun. Now I'm gonna go into my bronzer. My favorite bronzer is the Charlotte Tilbury, Charlotte, la, la, la. my favorite bronzer is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer. I have the shade medium. This is probably out of all of my bronzers, my number one favorite. I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Bronzer Brush. This is one of my favorite brushes because it's fluffy, but it also kind of has like a paddle shape where it fans out like this, but it's thinner this way. So I feel like that's really helpful and beneficial in this area specifically and in the jawline. So what I like to do is basically layer over top of the cream contour that I did, but in a more blown out way. So it's kind of just adding some depth and dimension and color to that area. So I'm going to add this in. You can see it's a little bit warmer than the shade on my cheeks. And I'm just kind of going right over the top to add some warmth. It kind of just fades that product as well. Bringing it over the top, just kind of, oops, just blending that in to the jaw. This will also help to blend that contour on the jawline into the face. And then I also bring this down my neck. And that's bronzing, it's very easy. Bronzing can be basically whatever you want with this. Like you can just bring it wherever you think that you want some warmth in your skin, where you want a little bit of color. This is like one of my favorite steps in makeup because I feel like it kind of just like brings it all together. It's like dotting the I and crossing the T's. It just, makes it all very cohesive. Next, I'm gonna powder contour. This is one of my favorite products of all time. I keep, like anytime I try a different one, I end up coming back to this one. This is Bone Beige from MAC and I need a new one because it's like completely gone. And my favorite brush for this is the 112 from Smith. What I love about this brush in particular is the shape. It is a tulip shape. You can see it looks like a tulip outside. So what I'm gonna do is take the Bone Beige and I'm just very lightly going to deepen up the contour. Ooh. I'm gonna hold pretty far back on the brush. If I hold right up here on my brush, then it's gonna apply so much product that it just deposit deposits all of it all at once in that spot and then it's really hard to blend out. So I'm gonna hold back further so that I don't apply as much pressure. And I'm just gonna rock it like this with my fingers right here. And just add a little bit more depth. I'm staying with that line that goes from the top of the ear to the corner of the mouth. And you can see, just added a little bit more oomph to the cheeks. You wanna make sure you get this like in your hairline, which when I'm like super platinum, it's an issue <laughs> because it turns my hair color a different color. And then of course, the jawline, same thing. This is nice because you can kind of just like do it underneath, you know, you can't really see it, but you have to like <laughs> do this so you can see that there's like a straight up line and then you can feather it upwards into the face. Get behind the ear, especially too, if you are doing all of this with a ponytail or your hair's up and you can see back here, make sure you carry these products to the back. Maybe have a friend, a spouse, a significant other, blend that out for you so you're not running around with like, a different color of the back of your neck. 
I mean, or do it. I do that all the time. I don't really care. <laughs> you know, this is very unnecessary, but it's necessary for me. I go into a different contour product for my nose. I, I don't know why I don't like bone beige that uh, Mac product. This one, I don't like this on my nose as much. It's very rosy and I'm looking for something very cool toned because I did the cream contour base. I don't need as much of this powder product. I just need like a little hint of it and it just brings it all together. So this is the NYX three steps to sculpt. I have this in the fair color and I don't even like these two products top. I only like the contour. It is magical and I've had this for years. It's probably expired. I have two different brushes that I like for this. This is the Luxie 182 brush. Um, if you're looking for a brush that's similar to this, cause I'm pretty sure that this is no longer, just look for any of those like old school, like angled eyeshadow brushes. Something that's angled like this will do the trick. Um, another one that I like, but it's very unique is this one from Ruffer. It's the Ruffer 32 brush. This is also angled, but it's also flat. So it's flat and dense right here. They're similar, but different. I think this one's more unique, but I do think this one is still available. I'm gonna be using this one today for no reason. I switch it up all the time. And I'm gonna pick up the powder. And for me, I like to add a lot right here. I don't know why, I just feel like when I do that, it really helps to accentuate the snatchiness of the rest of the nose. Just take it on the sides very lightly and drag it down. That will need to be blended, absolutely. So that's the shape that I go for, and now I'm just blending it. I think a lot of times when we're blending out the nose contour, it can be very easy to just drag it down the side of the nose. If you do that, that will actually make the nose look wider. Now, if you want your nose to look wider, which some people might, then bring it down further. But if you're trying to make it look more um, like snatched in, keep it keep this blend very focused even if you need to blend inwards where it's light which i know we want to highlight the center don't be afraid to blend your products in like this trust me it will help and it will it will help you so that you don't drag it down the side of your nose and it actually makes that highlight even smaller which helps snatch it in even more see we got like some weirdness going on in here now I'm just gonna clean that up with my loose powder. You wanna take a really dense brush. My favorite is this one from Smith. It's the 124 brush. It doesn't have to be this one specifically, but anything that's like really, really dense. So I'm gonna pick up the product here. You could also use like a little sponge um, or like a little powder puff from Amazon. I'll link those down below. But anything that's like really dense that you could just brighten up, that way it cleans this up here so you can really focus on the shape that you want. While you're here, you can also clean up any of this if you want. I usually do and then I end up going over it with bronzer because it's like too intense for me. I used to love like letting this sit and like bake, but I don't do that anymore. I just clean it up a little bit and then dust it away and bronze it back up, but it helps to just clean things. Blending this out and then going in with my bronzer brush just to make sure everything's nice and blended. Sides of the nose. And then I'm gonna highlight, I have two favorites here. This one's from Pat McGrath. I love this one. It's very beautiful and natural, um, almost like a vanilla shade for my complexion. And then another one that gives more peachiness is the one from Becca, it's Champagne Pop. Either one of these would be so beautiful. I think today I'm gonna be using the Pat McGrath one. For my nose, I like to use a small brush. So I'm just gonna use a MAC 239 brush. It's just a flat eyeshadow brush. And I'm gonna pick this up and pop this right on the center of the nose. Just like this, I'm gonna make an exclamation point and I'm just gonna blend this out. And this to me kind of just helps bring that whole nose contour together. It's looking very frosty, so I'll go in with a powder brush and just kind of layer over top of it so it's not too much. And then I'll bring the same product. I'm using a Fox 5 brush for my brush set with Sigma. Bring it right on the cheekbones. I used to bring this in a lot further, but I just keep it up top. And I also like to connect it to the highlight in my brow bone. 
And I also like to use the same highlight that I use on my face as I do on my eyes. So on my brow bone and my inner corner, I'm using this same highlight. I think it just helps to make everything very cohesive. Go right here, use my finger, the cupid's bow right here, blend it out. I'm also gonna use my finger to get in the inner corner again because I feel like it kind of disappeared with all of the powdering and stuff. Very pretty. You can also use this on your, I was gonna call these cheekbones, <laughs> your collarbones. I'm gonna add blush. I like to do my highlight before applying my blush just because then the highlight likes to peek out from behind the blush. And to me, it just looks a lot more natural. If I do my blush first and then I pop the highlight on, I feel like then the highlight kind of covers up some of the blush and it just does too much. I feel like a lot of us are just in a blushy phase right now and this is a way to just make that stand out even more against the highlight and the contour. You want that to be more of the focus and to me it just looks more natural. So you can use whatever blush you want. I'm gonna be using MAC Peaches. This is a go-to classic blush for me and I'm using a MAC 168 brush. It's very similar to the brush that I used for contouring. It's just not as flat on top. It's the same like angle shape but this one has more like flatness. It's really hard to tell on camera where this one's more fluffy. Pull back on the brush because you don't want to apply too much, especially if it's a new blush that you haven't tried. I use this one all the time, but even still I hold back and then you can always add more. With anything in makeup, start out with less than you think because you can always add more to it. It's easier to add on and keep building than it is to take away. And also if you go in with too much blush, it's okay because that's the first thing to fade from your face. I like to add it up on the forehead, bring it on the neck, I bring it on the chest. Just helps to bring everything together. I'm gonna set everything on the face. This is the Morphe setting spray. This is my personal favorite. I love this setting spray. Oh, I just ran out and it just gleeked all over my face. Damn it, that's not what you want. Yeah, there's none in there. Well, the left side of my face will be set. <laughs> Let me quickly do my lips and the look will be complete. Okay, so I just applied my lipstick and now you can see the final look. I feel like it always looks weird until I get that like final lipstick on and then it all like comes together. But this is the final look. This is the contouring and highlighting. This is what it looks like. I feel like it's, this to me is very intense still, but I've also come to terms with the fact that I like a very intense contour. I'm not somebody who wants just to kiss all the time. Sometimes I feel like there's a time and a place, but for me, more than not, like if I'm getting ready to go out somewhere, I'm going to do this and I'm okay with the fact that it is a made up face. I feel like there's nothing wrong with wearing a lot of makeup. And I feel like for the last few years now, pretty much since 2020, the very like natural, clean girl, whatever look has been in and I have loved that. If you like to rock a strong contour just to go to the gym and just to go get your groceries, go for it. You look bomb, you look phenomenal and I'm all about it. And I love a very glam look just as much as I love wearing no makeup and there's nothing wrong with it. So this is the final look. So you can see what that looks like. This is what it looks like from far away so you can see what it looks like. I feel like, I just feel really confident in this. I like feeling very glam and especially with like the eye look that I have on right now too, just like, mm, I just feel like it all goes together very nicely. So I hope you guys enjoyed hearing what my tips and tricks were. If you end up trying this out, please tag me on Instagram. Let me know down below in my comment section. I would love to hear how it goes. Um, I know that my contouring and highlighting has just kind of evolved over the years. I've changed things. I've been way more dramatic. I've been less dramatic. Um, I changed the shapes and stuff. So I will link my playlist down below in case there's another technique of mine that you prefer. Maybe this is too natural for you. Maybe this is too intense for you. I probably have a style and technique that you would prefer. So I will link that below. It's probably up in my cards here as well. Um, but let me know what other areas of the face you need more help on that I can walk you through step by step. I miss doing these types of videos and getting back to like just school makeup. Like I love where it feels like I'm teaching a lesson because I feel like when I first started in makeup, it was very intimidating to me. And there were people that, 
were amazing makeup artists that I just aspired to be like. I really wanted to be a makeup artist for a time there. And I was an active makeup artist for a time there, but I always like felt like I wasn't good enough. And it's just so funny looking back because I'm like, girl, you were good. I don't know why I never thought that I wasn't good enough, but yeah, it just, it can feel very intimidating, especially when you're first starting out, especially when like you haven't tried something new before, something like contouring and highlighting that can be just a little overwhelming. And I just want to encourage you to try new things, step outside the box, play with makeup. It's just makeup. It just washes off. It's really not a big deal. And if you just have fun with it, just play around with it. Um, I think you'll be surprised at how easy it is to get better the more that you try new things. So I really encourage you to do that. But yeah, let me know what other areas on the face that you want more help with, because I would love to break it down for you step by step. I know I've done all of these videos in the past, but it's been some years and it's time to update them and refresh them. So I would love to help you out. I've gotten so many bridal requests. So I will be doing one of those very soon because I know that it is wedding season already and I want to help you out. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please tag me in all of your looks on Instagram. Send me a DM on um, there. I really wish there was like a picture thing on YouTube because this is where the majority of you guys are at is on YouTube. And I would love to be able to see your looks, but like some of you guys don't have Instagram. So I wish that YouTube had like a, a picture thing where you could just like send me a picture in the comment. That would be amazing. But yeah, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.